a very good evening to all of you and welcome to play here ಅದ್ ಅಪ್ಪ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಥಿಯೇಟರ್ ವಿಶೇಷ ದಿವಸ ಅದ ಅಪ್ಪೇ ತುಂಬಿನಿ ಆರಾಧಿತ ದೇಶನಿ ಸಂಧ ತಮ್ಮ ಅಪ್ಪೇ ಸುಧಾನ ಅಂತೇ ಅದ ಅಪ್ಪೇ ಆರಾಧನೆ ಕಿರಿಕನಿ ದೇಶನಿ ಕರಿಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮಿಸ್ ಪುನೀತ ಧರ್ಮಸಿರಿ ಮಿಸ್ ಪುನೀತ ಧರ್ಮಸಿರಿ ಪೇರಾಧನೆ ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾಲಯ ಸಂಭಾವ್ಯ ಭಾಷಾ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಅಂತೇ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಕಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇजेस ಅವಲ ಕಾತಿಕಾಚಾರ್ಯವರಿಯ ಇದಿರ ಕಾಟಿಯುತು ಕರನವ ಮಿಸ್ ಪುನೀತ ಆಗೆ ವಿಶೇಷ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಪಾತತಮಯಿ ನಾಟ್ಯ ಶಿಲ್ಪಿನ ಸಂಧ ನಾಟ್ಯ ಶಿಲ್ಪಿನ ಸಂವಗನ ಲತಿನ್ ಅಭಿಲೇಖನ ಗ್ರೀಕ ರೋಮ ನಾಟ್ಯ ಕಲಾವ ಸಹ ರೋಮ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ರೋಮ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಸಂಬಂಧ ತಮಯ ಅದ ದೇಶನೆಯ ಕರೆಕ್ಟೆನ್ನೆ ಅಪಿ ಕಟೆ ಅಂಡ ಕಲಿನ್ ಅವಸಾನ ವಶೇನ್ ಸಂಧಾನ ಕರನ್ ನೋನೆ ಅದ ದೇಶನೆಯ ಸಹ ಇದ ಪಾಸಿತಿಯನ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಎಕ ಸಿಂಹದ ಸಹ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಶಿ ಭಾಷಾ ದೇಕೆಂ ಲತಿನ್ ಭಾಷಾಂಗ ಕಿಯನ ವಾಕ್ಯನ್ ತಮಯಿ ಮಮ ಹಿತುವೆ ಮೇ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾತ್ಯಕ ತಮಯಿ ಅದ ಅಪೇ ಕಥಾವ ಪಟಾಂಗಾಂಡ ಮಮ ಹಿತುವೆ ಕಿಯಲ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನಾ ಕರನ್ನೆ ಕೊಹಮದ ಮೇ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯ ಗ್ಲಾಡಿಯೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಅತ್ತೆಕ ಸಂಬಂಧ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಕಿಯನ ಕ ಓಲ ಬಲನ ಮೇತೆ ಕೊಹಮದ ಮೇಕ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಕಿಯಲ ಹರಿ ಗ್ಲಾಡಿಯೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಗೆನ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ್ನೆ ಇಸ್ಸೆಲ್ಲ ಅಪಿ ಬಲಮ ಹೊನಾದ ಮೇ ಪಾನ್ ಸಹ ಸರ್ಪಸ್ ಕಿಯಲ ಕಿಯನ್ನೆ ಕಿಯಲ ಹರಿ ಮೇಮ ವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯ ಅಪಿಟ ಅತ್ರಮ ಹಂಬವೆನೆ ಜುವನ ಕಿಯನ ಸಟಾಯ ರಚಿತವೇ ಸಟಾಯ ಸ್ಕಿನ ಕೃತಿ ಸಂಹಾರಕ ಕಲಾವಟ ಓಲಟ ಹಿತಂಡ ಪುಳು ಮೇ ಸಟಾಯ ಸ್ಗನ ವೆಡಿಯ ಹದಾರಲ ನೆ ನತಂ ಕೀವಲ ನೆ ಕಿಲ ಹಿತಂಡ ಪುಳು ಮುಕದ ಅಪಿ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯ ವಶೇನ ಗತ್ತುತೇಮ ಪೊದು ಅವಕಾಶ ಅಪಿಟ ಗುಡಕ್ ದಕಿಂಡ ಪುಳು ಅಂಗವೆನೆ ದೆನ್ ಗ್ರೀಕ ಸ ರೋಮ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಗನ ಅಪಿ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ ಕೊಟ ಗುಡಕ್ ಪಿಲಾವಟ ದೆನ್ ಅಪಿ ಹಿತಮು ಎಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಗನ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ ಅಂದ ಪುಳು ಟ್ರಾಜಿಡಿಸ್ ಗನ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ ಕಮಡಿಸ್ ಗನ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ ಎಕ್ಕೋ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿಕ ಅಪಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಟಿಸ್ ಗಾ ಗನನ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ ಪುಳು ನಮೂತ್ ಮೇ ಸಟಾಯಸ್ ಕಿನೆಕ ಪೊದು ಅವಕಾಶ ವೆಡಿಯ ಸರಿ ಸರಿ ನ ದೆಯ ನೆಲೆ ದೆನ್ ಮೆಹಿದಿ ಮೇ ಅತ್ರ ಗುಡಕ್ ದುರಡ ಪಟಾಂಗ ಅನ್ನೆತ್ ರೋಮೇ ಮೈ ಜುವನಗೆ ಸಹ ಈಟ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಕೀಪ ದೆನ ಕಿಟಿಯ ದೆನ್ ಮೇ ಹೀಗೆ ಗೊಡಕ್ ಪೆಲಾಟ್ ಅಪಿಟ ದಕಿಂಡ ಪುಳುವಂಗ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಸಮಾಜ ಕೆರೆಹಿ ಸಿದುವನ ಯಂ ಕೆಸಿ ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಆಗ್ತಮಯ ಅಪಿಟ ದಕಿಂಡ ಪುಳುವಂಗ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಮೇ ಯಾನೆ ಕವಿ ಆಕು ವಿಧಿಯಟ ಕವಿ ವಿಧಿಯಟ ಸಟಾಯಸ್ ದಾಸಕ್ ಅಪಿಟ ಹಂಬ ವೆನ್ವ ಅಜೂರ್ನಾಗೆ ಸಟಾಯಸ್ ಕೃತಿಯ ಇತ್ತಕೊಟ ಮೇಮ ದಕಿಯ ಹಂಬ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಎತನಿಮ್ಮಯ ದೆನ್ ಅಪಿ ಮೇ ಗೊಡಕ್ ಪೆಲಾಟ್ ಅಪಿಟ ದಕಿಂಡ ಪುಳುವಂಗ ಸಮಾಜ ಗೆನ ಸಮಾಜ ಪ್ರಶ್ನ ದೂಷಣ ವಂಚ ಇತ್ತಕೊಟ ಏ ಸಮದ ಗಣಮ ಮೇ ವಿವೇಚನೆಯ ಕರಣ ದೆನ್ ಹಾನ್ ಸಹ ಸರ್ಕಸ್ ಕಿಯನ ಕಥಾಂದರ ಅಪಿ ಗತ್ತುತ್ತೇಮ ಓಹೋ ಕಿಯನ್ನೆ ಪೊದು ಜನತಾವಟ ಹಾನ್ ಸಹ ಸರ್ಕಸ್ ದುನ್ನೋತ್ ಇಸಿಯಂ ಮೊನಮ ವಿಧಿಯಕಟ ಕರಲಿ ಗಸಾಮಿಟ ಪೊದು ಜನತಾವಟ ಅವಸ್ಥಾವ ಹಿಮಿವೆನ್ನೆ ನಹ ಕಿಲ ತಮಯ್ ಹಿತಾನೆ ಮೇ ಫಾಲಕ ಯಂ ಮಿಸಿಂಗ್ ಕರಣ ಯಂ ಕಿಸ್ ದಯಾ ಕಿಲ ತಮಯ್ ಓನ್ ಸಂಧಾನ ಕರಣ್ಣೆ ಮುಖದ ಪೊದು ಜನತಾವ ಪಾಲನೆ ಕರಂಡ ಹರಿಮು ಪಹಸುವ ಕುಣ ಮೇಮ ಸಂದರ್ಶನ ದೀಮೆ ಏನ್ ತಮ ಯೋ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಕರನ್ನೆ ಪಾನೆ ಮೆಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಕಿರ್ಕೆನ್ ಸೆಸ್ ಕಿಯಲ್ಲ ದೆನ್ ಎತ್ತಕೊಟ್ಟ ಓಹು ಮೆತ ಅಪಿಟ ಪೇನ ವಿಧಿಯಟ ವಿವೇಚನೆ ಕರನೆ ಪಾಲಕಿಂ ಪಮನ ನೆರೆ ಈಟ ಅಮತರವ ಓಹು ಪೊದು ಜನತಾವ ಕೆರಹಿದ ತಿಯನ್ನೆ ಪುಂಚಿ ಕಲಕಿರಮ ದೆ ಅಪಿ ಬಲನು ಮುಖದ್ ಮೇಕಿಂ ಮೇ ಗ್ಲಾಡಿಯೇಟರ್ಸ್ ನತ್ತ ಅಪಿ ಅದ ಕಥಾ ಕರನ ಮೇ ಸಂದರ್ಶನ ಪಿಲಿ ಬಂದದ ಸಂಬಂಧ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಕೊಹಮದ ಕಿಯ ಮುಖದ ಮೇ ಸರ್ಕಸ್ ಕಿಯನ ಗಾನೆಯಟ ಕಿಹಿಪದ ಆತ್ಮ ಐತೇನೋ ಏನ್ ಎಕಾಕ್ ವೆನ್ನೆ ಮೇ ಗ್ಲಾಡಿಯೇಟರ್ ಶೋಸ್ ಮಂ
අපිට දකින්න පුළුවන් වුණ විවිධාකාර උත්සව විනෝදයට තිබුණු සංදර්ශන ගැන යම් කිසි පොඩි හැඳින්වීමක් දීලා අපි බලමු කවුද මේ ග්ලැඩියේටර් කෙනෙක් කියලා කියන්නේ ඕනම කෙනෙකුට ග්ලැඩියේටර් කෙනෙක් වෙන්න පුළුවන් නැත්නම් මොහොමද ග්ලැඩියේටර් කෙනෙක් ග්ලැඩියේටර් කෙනෙක් විතර ෆක්ට් වෙන්න කියන එක ඒත් එක්කම අපි බලමු ග්ලැඩියර් කෙනෙක් වුණා ඉන් පස්සේ ඔහු මොනවාද කරන්නේ කෙලින්ම කඩුවක් තරගෙන කෙලින්ම එරී නායකට යනවාද නැත්තම් ඊට ප්‍රථමම කරන්න තියෙන දේවල් මොනවාද කියලා අපි බලන්න ඕනේ මොනවාද ඒත් එක්කම ඔවුන්ගෙන් ජනතාව බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන ඒත් එක්කම අවසාන වශයෙන් බලුවොත් කෙනෙකුට මෙහිදී දිනුමක් පැරදුමක් තියෙනවාද කියලා අපිට බලන්න පුළුවන් නැත්තම් හැමෝම දන්න විදියට මරණය විතරමද එක්කම ගැලවමක තිබුණේ කියන එක අපිට සාකච්ඡා කරන්න පුළුවන් හෘදයවනේ කොටසට යනකොට මම හිතුවා මේ වැඩියට සංදර්ශන ඇත්තටම අපිට තිබුණේ හුදෙක් විනෝදයට පමණක්ද වෙන් වුණු සංදර්ශන පමණක්ද නැත්නම් මෙයින් විනෝදයට එහා ගිය යමක් අපිට දකින්න පුළුවන්ද කියලා අපි කතා කරලා බලමු ඒත් එක්කම මේ සමාජයට බලපාන විදිහ නැත්නම් බලපාපු විදිහ ගැනත් කතා කරන එක ඉතාමත් වැදගත් වෙනවා හරි ඉතිහාසය සම්බන්ධයෙන් ගොඩක් අය හිතන්නේ අමාරුම කොටසක් මතක තියාගන්නයි නැත්තම් ගොඩක් අය ටැබු එකක් කියලා හිතන එක වෙලාවකට අපේ සමාජය ගැන ගන්න කොටත් හිස්ටරි නැත්තම් ඉතිහාසය හදාරන කොට අමාරුයි අපි බලමු පොඩි කෙටියෙන් මම හඳුන්වලා දෙන්න මේ කාල වකවාණු කිහිපේ වැදගත් වෙනවා මොකද අපේ සාකච්ඡාවට සම්බන්ධයෙන් දැන් ඉතිහාසය ගත්තොත් රෝමයේ තිබුණු මේ කාල වකවාණු තුනක් තියෙනවා පළවෙනියෙන් අපිට හම්බ වෙන්නේ රීගල් පීරියඩ් නැත්තම් රජවරුන්ගේ කාලය ක්‍රිස්තු පූර්ව අටවන සිය වසේ ඉඳන් තමයි මේ පටන් ගන්නේ අපිට හම්බ වෙනවා රජවරු හත් දෙනෙක් දැන් මෙතන මම මේ දීලා තියෙන මූර්තියෙන් අපිට පෙනෙන්නේ බොහොමයක් දෙන අඳුරනා වෙන්න පුළුවන් මේ මේ රොමියුලස් සහ රීමස් කියන සහෝදරවරු දෙදෙනා තමයි ඉන්නේ ඇයි රොමියුලස් සහ රීමස් අපිට වැදගත් වෙන්නේ මොකද රෝමියස් තමයි අපිට හම්බන පළමු රෝමයේ රජතුමා කියලා කියන්න පුළුවන් ඒත් එක්කම එක දෙයක් මතක තියාගන්න මෙතනදී මේ දෙන්නා සහෝදරයෝ දෙන්නා අතරත් ලොකු සටනක් දියත් වුණා මොකද රෝමයට නම තබා ගැනීමත් රෝමයේ රජ වීමටත් ඔවුන් දෙතන අතර තරගයක් තිබීමෙන් රොමියුලස් අවසාන වශයෙන් තමාගේ සහෝදරයා මරු මුරට පත් කරනවා ඒත් එක්කම दूषण वंचा क्रियावाणिता युद्ध संग्राम මේ අවුරුදු ඇත්තටම කිව්වොත් 118ක් දක්වා යදෙන නමුත් කාල වකවාන තුනක් අතරේ තමයි මෙය දොරණය වෙන්නේ. දැන් මේ යුද්ධය ගත්තොත් එහෙම අවසානයේදී රෝමය තමයි ජයග්‍රහණය කරන්නේ. ඒ එක්කම මේ ජයග්‍රහණය ලැබුවයින් පස්සේ රෝම සමාජයේ සමාජීය ආර්ථිකම ඒත් එක්කම සංස්කෘතියකම වශයෙන් ඒත් එක්කම දේශපාලනික වශයෙන් වෙනස්කම් බොහොමයකට ලක් වෙනවා. එයින් එක දෙයක් මම කිව්වොත් එහෙම බොහොම විශාල ධනයක් රෝමයට ගලාගෙන ඉන්න පටන් ගන්නවා. දැන් මුලදී රෝම වැසියෝ ඇත්තටම ජීවත් වුණේ හරිම සරල ජීවිත ගත කරපු විදිහට තමයි අපිට සැලකෙන අපිට පොතපතේ සඳහන් වෙන්නේ. නමුත් මේ මුදල් නැත්තම් මේ ධන ස්කන්ධය රෝමයට ආවත් සමගම ඔවුන්ගේ ජීවිතය එන්න එන්නම සුකෝපු බෝවිය වෙන්නත් ගත්තා. දැන් සමහර කතුවරු කියන විදිහට ජුවනලුනක් පවසනවා මේ ධනයත් එක්ක संदर्शन 
තේරුම් ගන්න පුළුවන්. ඒත් එකම තවත් දේවල් කීප දේවල් ටිකක් වුණා අපි ඒවා ගැනත් සාකච්ඡාව අතර යනකොට කතා කරන්න පුළුවන්. අවසානව දැන් මේ කාලෙදී තමයි ඔයාලා ගොඩක් අඳුරන කෙනෙක්. අහලා තියෙන රූලස් කීප දෙනෙකුත් අපිට හම්බ වෙන්නේ රකයි සහෝදරවරුන්ගෙන් පටන් ගත්තොත් ඒත් එකම මේරියස් උල්ලා පම්පි අනිත් ඊට පසුව අපිට හම්බ වෙන්නේ ඔයාලා අහලා තියෙන ජූලියස් සීසර් බිහි වෙන්නේත් මෙම කාල වකවානුවයි. එතකොට ජූලියස් සීසර්ගේ මරණයත් සමගම තමයි අපිට රෝම ජන රජයේ අවසානය දකින්න පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ. එතනින් තමයි අපිට පටන් ගන්නේ රෝම අධිරාජ්‍ය නැත්නම් ද රෝමන් එම්පයර් බිහි වෙන්නේ මෙම කාල වකවානුවත් සමගයි. එතකොට අපේ සාකච්ඡාර වැදගත් වෙන්නේ මෙම රෝම ජන රජයේ තිබුණු सदर्शन मेतन मेल गुड संबंध मम्मी मेवटी පොදුවේ හදන් හඳුන්වන්නේ ලූඩි පබ්ලිකි නැත්තම් පබ්ලික් ගේම්ස් කියලා. එතකොට පළවෙනියම ගත්තොත් ග්ලැඩිටෝරියල් කම්බැක්ස් මෙම සම්බාජන ඉතාමත් ප්‍රසිද්ධයක් ගත්ත. අපි ඒක ගැන කතා කරන්න නිසා මෙතන වැඩින් කතා කරන්නේ නැහැ. නව් මැකියා නැත්තම් මොක් නේවල් බැටල්ස් කියලා හඳුන්වන මෙහිදී වෙන්නේ ඒගොල්ලෝ නාවික සටන් ඒ කියන්නේ අතීතයේ ඉතිහාසයේ සිදුවූ නාවික සටන් ඔවුන් මෙහිදී ඉදිරිපත් කරන බොහෝ විට මෙය उदाहरणिया धानवसान हितांडिया भाषा so because i want to give an idea with regard to like they are not just merely like fighters who went to the arena and fought with another person but they had their own identity and they had uh, like a hard life that they had to maintain when they became a gladiator so the first thing is about their status so the social status is very important what kind so I think many of you uh, know about this whole idea about slavery in in ancient Greece and Rome. So one thing is that many of these gladiators were slaves, and also there will be some freeborn men as well. So we'll talk about them, and then you will find prisoners of war. So whenever there's a war, and if you lose that war, these prisoners will become the slaves of the victors, that is, of the Romans' side. and they naturally i mean eventually become slaves and some of them would be trained as gladiators and then there will be some condemned criminals as well and then finally there are volunteers 
who in the right mind would actually volunteer to be a gladiator, one might actually think. That is one, I mean, there are several reasons. Uh, one possible reason is that it is mainly because of fame or glory that they gain by actually winning this tournament in one sense. And also there are the reasons as to why, because some people might run out of money and if they need money, they would participate as a gladiator and try to win a tournament and then get some reward in return. So those are some points that we have to remember when we talk about a gladiator himself. And then once you are labeled as a gladiator and where do you go? So they did have a training school that they are called as gladiatorial schools. There were many, I mean, there were several, not just in Rome itself, but in other provinces as well. There was one in Capua, a famous one, you all might know about this, and uh, Ludus Magnus. We will come to talk about Capua in a bit. And then Ludus Magnus, which is situated near the Flavian Amphitheater itself, that is the Colosseum. And within this training period, you will have a person who would actually sort of look after all what you are doing. That is the person called Lannister. So this guy actually would buy you or employ a suitable person who, is, who can be known as a gladiator. And that person will be trained properly. And also in after that, Nalistar would actually sell them or rent them to anybody who actually organized these games. So it is all a business here. And uh, don't think that this training is very easy or anything. It was a very rigorous training and it was very harsh discipline that they had to maintain. And, uh, and uh, the other problem, I mean, the, the question that you might wonder is that once you go to the school, how long do you have to wait and all of that? So it's not like the moment that you are, I mean, taken as a gladiator and then you go to the arena itself, no. So there was like a period, sometimes even three years, you had to wait just to get into the arena itself. And uh, so that is very important to know. And also within this school, you will actually, they will learn different skills that they can actually um, kind of develop during that time. And then if by any chance you win the race and what happens, you either get a laurel wreath sometimes, and then this wooden sword is very, very important for the gladiators, which is called as a rudis, that will actually symbolize freedom itself. And uh, this freedom is so important to a slave. Maybe not for the volunteers. Volunteers are there mainly for, for glory and fame because at one point they, they, they are actually the superstars that we have nowadays. So they, they have like a fan clubs and all of these people would run after a gladiator. So, but in one sense for the slaves, freedom is what matters. Yes, these would be the arenas that we have, but remember this Circus Maximus is for the chariot races, just want to give an idea. And uh, this is one space that is what we call amphitheater, the Colosseum, which is still standing like the ruins you have. And uh, there you will have these gladiatorial shows. And uh, remember, it's not only this Colosseum that they had, but they had even in the provinces and in other areas they had uh, these small amphitheaters. This is like the grandest one that they had. And uh, yes, so what is the agenda of the day? This is very important, why? Because you can't just show gladiators at once. So they had like a big agenda, like a, what is happening in the morning and afterwards and all that. So I, I forgot to mention one thing like, um, for like, for example, if you think about the time period of Julius Caesar, he actually gave 100 days as holidays, meaning festival days uh, for a, one year, actually. So that on those days, people didn't have to work. So they just can go to these spectacles and then enjoy their life. So they didn't have anything else to do. See the distraction that they tried to, uh, I mean, give. Imagine if you had 100 days of holidays. I don't know how you guys feel nowadays, but um, yeah. So 
all these spectators and uh, uh, spectators become very important. So the main idea behind this, one of the reasons is that you need to entertain the crowd. So you can't give away the big show uh, at the very beginning itself. So they will start off by presenting some exotic animals that they can find from various places. Then start from giraffes, deers, monkeys, and then uh, tigers, uh, lions, all of these different animals, they would bring in for them. The amount of money that you have to pay. So whose money is that? That is also another problem. And sometimes there are reports by these historians where uh, sometimes there are shipwrecks that uh, some of these animals all uh, died during these shipwrecks as well. So imagine what happens when something goes wrong. And after this parade goes on, so this is like the circus part. So there will be some entertainment provided by performing animals. So for example, monkeys come and do something and all of that. So it's like the fun part of the whole uh, show. So this is what happens in the morning itself in the first half of the games. And then some action, fighting between animals. So even here, this is actually, uh, now imagine if you make, they would have two pairs actually. So imagine if you bring in like a lion and a deer, then the outcome is very, uh, I mean, anybody would know what it's going to be the outcome. So they won't pair up, a, up such animals. What they do is they would normally pair up a lion or a tiger or maybe a bull or a bear or with uh, something like that. So they don't want to end the show quickly. They want to drag it. So in one sense, these events need to be very diverse. It can't be the same because otherwise the audience will get bored. That is why you have all these entertaining things happening. Okay, so where are the men? Now comes, so we have the hunters coming into the scene. So you had these animals and then comes the Venatio. Venatio is the hunting ground itself. So here we will see uh, fighting that happens or sort of hunting that happens with Venatores, those are the hunters and the animals themselves. They are, here is the moment where they start killing off this animal. So they won't take all the animals that they brought forward, but few of them just to entertain the crowd. And uh, this one, another thing that happens, Amnatus ad bestias. Here, they use very dangerous animals to execute criminals themselves. So these criminals would range from murderers, robbers, and arson, treasoners, all of them. And uh, I mean, public executions did happen in, uh, not only just in uh, Rome itself, but in other uh, parts of the world as well in the, in the past. So this is much more, um, I mean, it is considered as one of the most uh, dangerous or the harshest punishment that a person gets death being killed in a gladiatorial show itself. So here he would, he won't have any weapons or anything. He will be just tied on to a pole and then animals would come and kill them. And this also passes a message to the people or the spectators who are in the arena itself saying that if you go against us, this is what is going to happen to you. So be aware. So it's like with the entertainment itself, they are going, they're actually giving you a warning itself. And then finally, you have the gladiatorial combat themselves. So who are these? Uh, yeah, before we go to that, I will show you some of the mosaics because if anybody who wants to study about gladiators, the mosaics would be one evidences that would be a very good source that we can uh, have to study them. So here in the first row itself, you have, uh, um, there's a dog here and then uh, these uh, animals fighting with each other and then uh, Venationes and uh, about the criminal and all of this. And here again, an animal fight is happening. Sad scene again. Venatores, uh, Venatio here fighting with a group of leopards. So here you can see all the dead 
bodies of these poor animals. What have they done to deserve this uh, punishment? Yes. So moving on to the gladiatorial combats here. So I will, one thing that I wanted to give, uh, I mean, pass sort of the message here is that they, they were not just, I mean, they had names. I mean, they were identified and it's not just like they were just mere fighters in an arena. So I will sort of try to bring that point here as well, while we discuss. So here in this, uh, I mean, some of these inscriptions, it's like half where they are not complete. Here you will find the names of some of these gladiators, like here Bacchibus, um, Astarchius, and then Astibus and all of that. So that is very important for us to know. Uh, another thing that I want to focus here is that, uh, beside from the different types of gladiators that you can see in this uh, mosaic, there's this symbol. See this uh, sort of the symbol that you can see, sort of like a planet. But uh, if anyone has studied, uh, if anybody knows Greek alphabet, I mean, most people do know the Greek alphabet because nowadays they use it as uh, symbols and all of that as well. So this is the, the letter theta. So theta is the initial of the Greek word that we have, thanatos. Not thanos, but thanatos. Thanatos means death. So the ones who are uh, ones who died in this uh, arena itself will be marked by this. Now, I mean, uh, Greek letters become, I mean, they have become important and significant these days because all the variants that we have uh, have been marked by Greek alphabet. You have Delta and then now Lambda. I hope we won't have Theta because anyways, that's going to be our death. Okay. So the types of gladiators, uh, there's a lot. So I will just give you a few just to get an idea to know that how, how uh, unique some of them are and then how specific the Romans were about this fight. It's not just about a fight, but it's much bigger than that. So here one is that secutor because these are the, some of the uh, like commonly found one in France in these paintings and all over the place. So secutor is a person or the gladiator that would have this big shield and then the helmet. Now, remember, even the helmet also becomes different from one gladiator to another in some cases. And, um, and then that guy would have a gladius, that is the sword or a small dagger. Now, the retiarius. So, retiarius would have a net, a trident, and a dagger. And he would be armored as well. I will show you retiarius in a bit. And then, bestiarius, those who went into combat with beasts. So don't try to, con I mean, don't try to confuse them with Venatiores and then here these guys would actually go and actually fight or come back with this beast in the arena. And uh, the final one, uh, Mirmilo. So this gladiator is somewhat similar to Secutor that we have. The only difference is the helmet. So that is the only difference that we have. Otherwise, this, uh, they, they have the same sort of weapons. So you have... Uh, the, the arm guard and the shoulder guard and all of that. Um, I mean, the ones, maybe there might be people who are interested with the weaponry and then armor as well. Okay, let's see some of the mosaics that we have. Maybe you'll be able to identify some of them. Now the, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention with regard to retiaris, the main thing that we can remember, I mean, identify a retiaris is that he didn't have a helmet. He has a net and Trident and a dagger as weapons, but no helmet to cover his face. So here you can easily identify him and he has a dagger and then all the armor itself. And that is uh, Alumnus, that is his name. And then he has defeated this guy called Mazikunus. So he is dead here. So Mazikunus would be our secutor because secutor had a large shield. And also with the helmet, you can identify him and his dagger has fallen down. And you can see, again, these inscriptions are sort of missing, but uh, you have the letters V, I, C, Vic. So the whole idea sometimes is there. V, Kit, meaning uh, uh, alumnus one. So the victor himself. And uh, this guy, also you can identify with the helmet, Mirmilov. 
Yeah, I wanted to actually show you the net here. So here you have a, a, a Retiarius and a Secutor fighting. Here he has thrown off his net here. And then see the full form of this verb, we kit astyanax, we kit astyanax has won the day. Okay. So I, what I wanted to show here was that uh, they had names and that is very important. And uh, another uh, source that we can actually use to study about these common man actually would be um, epitaphs. So I wanted to bring in this point because I actually study about uh, uh, Roman actresses and the epitaphs uh, connected to them. So I thought of bringing in this just to show you how, I mean, I mean, how even the people who they've lived with, even their own gladiators, fellow gladiators would actually write epitaphs for their, uh, I mean, their friends when they die. So this actually you will find in gravestones. So Flamma is the name of this secutor. Flamma, so uh, yeah, the other thing that you can see here is that you can see only one name. So where's the rest of this, his name? Because normally the Romans had like so many names and uh, uh, at least three. So here you have only the Prinomen. So that means when you, when they have given only one name, that means he or she is a slave. So here, mostly these gladiators were slave. So this could be his nickname as well, Flamma means flame. So he lived for 30 years and for 34 times. And see, he won 21 times, but, um, and don't be defeated four times as well. So we will see, we will talk about this factor. Okay, how did he survive if he was defeated? But what is that whole issue? And then he was from Syria, see? And then the last point is very important, Delicatus made this to his well-deserving fellow at town. So this was actually, made by his own friend who was actually fighting along with Flamma himself. And then there's another one in Genus, then that gladiator is also from uh, Germany itself. Yes, this is an interesting one. So most of the time it is said that um, these gladiators did have pets. So one would be dogs, they would have uh, dogs with them and this Gravestone has that along with the inscription itself. And if anyone is interested, I, I told Amante that I would actually share these ebooks with everybody. If you want to study about then this book by Robert Knapp is also very important, Invisible Roma. So you will get the idea because um, here he's talking about gladiators and also about prostitutes. Because um, if you look at mainstream literature, they are always, written by social elite class uh, and uh, men. So in that way, you can only most of the time gather information about the, about a certain class of people, about these ones, those who are invisible from, for the elite class, you can actually learn about them through epitaphs uh, and uh, inscriptions and even with paintings and mosaics and all of the other uh, such resources rather than just depending on the literature itself. And uh, if I ask you if you know about any other uh, gladiator, many of you have heard about hmm, Spartacus. So Spartacus is one of the famous gladiators that we have because of the revolt that he caused in his school, which, is, uh, which was in Capua. I told you, you might know about Capua because this is the school where Spartacus went to, the gladiatorial school. So we call this revolt of Spartacus as the third survival because um, this is like the third, uh, I mean, the slaves started to revolt, but the other two happened at a different place, but not by gladiators. And uh, so he was a Thracian by birth, as uh, so many of you know, and then he was taken into Rome and all of these things happened, but then he wanted to actually get out of this uh, place and um, actually uh, wanted to, I mean, he wanted to, free all the other gladiators that he was uh, living with this uh, in this uh, arena and uh, get out of this place. And then he started this slave revolt and uh, he escaped from this school. What happened afterwards, many people actually, um, but uh, in one sense, many slaves later on actually joined this course and uh, 
and then uh, because they were winning. But what happened later on, as you all know, they actually failed or they, actually, they were actually defeated at the end of the day. Earlier they were winning, but with the last few battles, they actually lost the game. So if I ask you maybe this question in one sense, who actually put an end to the revolt of Spartacus? Many might not know the answer. So it doesn't matter. So Crassus would be the one who actually put the end to this uh, revolt of Spartacus. He managed to uh, put an, I mean, they, they fought and then, uh, I mean, even Spartacus died in the field during this battle. And afterwards, some of the slaves actually managed to flee these battles in, it stays like around 6,000 slaves actually managed to flee this battlefield. And uh, what happened to the ones who fled? That is a big tragedy that we have. What happened? Pompey. Those, like, those were the uh, two rulers and three actually, Crassus, Pompey, and Julius Caesar were the ones who were actually ruling that time period. Pompey got hold of them and they killed all of them and then crucified them in the Appian way in order to let them know if you revolt again, this is what is going to happen to you. So, so in one sense, Spartacus becomes important for our historical studies and also why people remember him is that he's, he's almost like an iconic uh, symbol that we have of uh, like the enemy of oppression or the champion of freedom itself. So that is why everybody would remember Spartacus, not Crassus or Pompey who put down the revolt of these freedom fighters. Yes. So after this, I was like talking about uh, the, all the gladiators and what happened to them. But the spectators become, also become the other center of attention that we have in this situation. Because um, even the ones who plan these or the organizers want to entertain the crowd. It's not about the people who fight here, right? Do you understand? So that is also something that you have to remember. So here, this is something that uh, many people also question about. But uh, yeah, so here this gladiator is uh, asking the audience whether they want to see this guy dead or not. So what happens, we call this form in some case, and in certain cases, actually majority of may, uh, time, what happens is that they were given freedom. So missio is the idea where it means like um, release or given the freedom or just to let them uh, go, that idea. So that also depends on the crowd. Imagine the power that they had. And uh, they might start off saying whether to kill them or not. And the emperor or the ruler who is presiding over this whole uh, arena is the one who actually gives the last verdict. But remember, you, I mean, many would think, okay, many people were killed. But on the other hand, when we look at it, the rulers or the ones who maybe even Lannister also the ones who organized these games because they had to buy these gladiators. I mean, imagine when they had to like, kill their best gladiator. They don't want to kill off their best gladiator. They want to save them. So in one sense, like for instance, what some of these historians say is that when you have like uh, two gladiators fighting very well from the very beginning itself, that shows that they are well capable, skillful gladiators. In that way, they don't want that person to be killed. So that is why some many of these people wanted to actually keep them alive. So there's that, but on the other hand, they want to entertain the crowd because the, so most of the time the crowd also wanted to see blood and death. So that is also there. So that conflicting idea is, um, can be seen in these shows and the importance given to all these uh, the spectators, that is something that all of you have to remember. Now, if uh, maybe some of you have actually seen this uh, movie where you have Russell Crowe, Gladiator. It's one of, uh, one of the famous classics that we have. And there you can see how the gladiator, I mean, the, the spectators become so 
I mean, so enthusiastic and they want to see people killed and all of these happening. And if you can remember what the Lannister says to Maximus is that he says, don't kill off your opponent quickly, but take time. You need to use different skills, different ways, linger, just attack them, but don't kill at once because you need to keep the curiosity going on for a long time period. That is what you need to have. I think um, maybe there's another film actually, like a trilogy where you have uh, the, this concept of gladiator shows and the Roman atmosphere is sort of taken into this movie. Uh, that is the Hunger Games. There, I, why I want to bring this, uh, I'm sure many of you have ideas about these movies because I know in this plain tea talk space, uh, many, people are interested in talking about films and there are so many discussions going on. So you are all free to talk about this uh, during the discussion time itself. So here, why I want to bring this here, if you can remember the audience that they had, the spectators. So they are like portraiters, like, like a mindless crowd. Just They just want to see this, this massacre and they, they don't care about anybody. So there is that. So it's just about the you can see how, how even these deaths become mere entertainment for these, for these uh, crowds themselves. Yes, okay. So I was speaking a lot. I would uh, like to give you all an opportunity to uh, take part in this small sort of, not an activity, but I will ask a small question and then you guys have the uh, chance to um, Write down your answers in the chat box or I hope is it okay to unmute your mic and then give the answer as well. I hope that's fine. I will ask from the moderators. Um, so now since we are talking about movies and entertainment and all of that, if I ask you this question, but don't think too deeply, just think about what comes to your head first. Um, I'm sorry if you guys, maybe some of you might not have seen this. But there was this famous TV series, uh, maybe it's, it ended three or two years ago, uh, Game of Thrones. I hope many of you have seen this. That is one of the, I mean, it became like a hit also. So what I want you guys to do is take a few minutes, maybe one or two minutes, and then I can drink some water and come back as well. So what you have to do is think about two scenes, like what are the two scenes that you remember from this TV series or the two scenes that struck you the most? Just, you can type it in the chat box or you can unmute and uh, tell to the entire audience. After we talk about that, I will move to the final part of the presentation. And this is going to be important for my next part of the discussion as well. Okay, I will give you guys to uh, use your, I hope, um, Amanti, is it okay for people to use their mic or you, they can put it in the chat box itself? Yes, mic is okay. Good. So we have answers coming. So please, at least, I will wait till a few people of mention them. We have several. Red Wedding becomes one of the most frequent ones.
I will wait for one more maybe. I will go through the ones that uh, they are in the chat box. First, coming from Lyanvi, Red Wedding and Joffrey's death are there. And we have Red Wedding and the Battle of Winterfell. That's Yakmini says Red Wedding. Asunta says the time where one guy dug out the other guy's eyes to win a gladiator show. Yes, <laughs> there was that uh, as well. And then uh, Lyanne again says, Danny burning King's Landing. Yes, definitely a moment to remember. And then Amanti says, Olena Tyrell's death. So we have one more, Yatmini, uh, Battle of the Bastards. Okay, so as you can see, many of the ones that many people would actually remember this from this show is would be actually connected to deaths. I mean, that show is full of blood and gold and all of that. Uh, it's part of that whole uh, show is something similar to that. So you, what you can see is like the Red Wedding and the, all these, it's about scenes of death and the entertainment, the popular culture that we have is also sort of catering us to look at deaths. So if maybe some of you might not have seen this, so I will show you this. These are some of the, I mean, some of the death scenes that uh, the spectator, I mean, the audience mentioned as well. I think uh, it's the Red Wedding and then the outcome of that here. And then you have the gladiator scene, but this is not the actual parts that Asunta sort of mentioned, what happens afterwards to this guy. So I think with this series, what happened is that with these death scenes become, became like the highlighting point. If somebody asked who became the uh, king and who got the, the iron throne itself, oh, one might actually wonder. But then uh, in one sense, every death scene that we have in this TV show is different from one another. So in one sense, you can see like the writer and the, the ones who uh, did the show wanted to keep the audience entertained. They can't give off the same death to the same, I mean, to different characters. So it's not just about who died, but how he or she died is the point that many of us actually talked after we saw the, so maybe as episode or something, right? That is what we actually look into. So in one sense, we can see that unconsciously, or consciously, as the audience or the spectators, even in popular culture, we are sort of drawn to these bloody thrilling entertainment. So you can see that similar atmosphere, what was going on with the minds of the spectators that were there in, the, in, the, in this Roman audience as well. So what happened, the, the, the tragic uh, impact that happens with this is that how people start to normalize deaths. So that is the tragedy here. So if we go back to, I mean, one incident I will tell you like from what is happening in, in modern day as well, like it's not just about uh, TV shows or films. Even if you put on news itself, you have the same issue. Imagine there was a homicide or maybe an accident. That sort of news actually, you will, they will actually, mention about it from the morning itself, maybe they would give like small clips of it and say it's almost like a trailer. And then they would say, okay, you can watch the whole scene, how it happened, why it happened, who were the victims and all of that at eight o'clock. And then they will show you that news, maybe towards the end of the whole, uh, the news broadcasting itself. So many people, viewers would wait to see that news rather than look at maybe the first main event. So the first news uh, that would actually happen 
at the very beginning, it's a, maybe it's about the increasement of different uh, like prices that you have with regard to the country and all of that. You would actually, so it's also sort of uh, even in the, like even nowadays, how entertainment sort of, uh, it's like in that into the cultural phenomena as well, even taking deaths uh, in that way. So in one sense, you can see how this becomes very normalized in one sense. And if you move back to Rome itself, um, then if I ask this uh, question, like if what you know about Julius Caesar, so many you, many of you would actually answer that question because many of you are fans of Sura Papa. So you know about this Roman career. So in one sense, you know about that part. But if I ask you, uh, what else, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when we talk about Julius Caesar would be is this. Again, how Julius Caesar died. How his end, like the way that he died is the one, like one of the major things that people would remember from Julius Caesar. And if we ask, like even in paintings, I mean, even Shakespeare used that in his play. And uh, in if you think about this, this is the, the what, I mean, the, the ruler that you had in Rome at that time period. And there were several reasons as to why he was killed. One reason is that because see, they were like, he was killed, not like secretly or anything, but, uh, but by the senators themselves and, and out in the open here. What you can understand is that, uh, no, what I was going to tell earlier would be like why he was killed. One reason is that, there were several. One reason is that he was actually aiming to become a king or a tyrant himself, and the Romans actually hated uh, tyrants or kings. But ironically, after the death of uh, Caesar, anyways, Romans are going to get hold of tyrants themselves. And uh, yeah, so here in that way, um, the Romans managed to even kill off their rulers not just Julius Caesar, even starting from Gracchi brothers that happened, their rulers were killed out in the open. And in social media, what happens is this. I think uh, many of you must have seen this. So in that sense, how, how people make, uh, I mean, this you will see like the meme culture, yeah, people laugh at almost anything if they give it to you. So in that sense, how death becomes such a, such a factor in, day-to-day -day life rather than seeing the tragedy of it or the, the, the I mean, um, the tragedy of it, it's kind of missing in this culture. And even now itself, we are actually missing on that main factor. So after this, if we move on to the biggest question, the last part of this, who are the ones who sponsored these games? I sort of mentioned about it. It can be mostly the rulers and the emperors, the senators, consuls, and all of them. And there were private individuals also who uh, sort of uh, um, organized this. But within time, you can see how massive these gladiator shows were. And the private individuals didn't have money even to actually have this uh, spectacle because uh, they are nowhere near to these emperors. Why did they have them? So here we have. The, the crowd inside these uh, amphitheaters, maybe in the Circus Maximus, all these places. So while these rulers plan what is going to happen next. So in one sense, these games and these shows were near, I mean, big um, sort of distractions that these rulers sort of uh, sponsored in those time periods. And what happened with these is that you will see uh, corruption, all of these. So in one sense, these rulers managed to rule Rome the way they wanted. Nothing else mattered. The, what the people said didn't actually matter at all. So if I give you some examples from Roman history, so the first reason would be to attract the crowd and all of that because uh, many of these consuls or senators, they needed their vote. So they wanted to buy the vote of these uh, voters, the audience, so they would have the best sort of uh, spectacle ever. 
So in that sense, that is there. And remember, many of these events were free. And uh, that is also a thing that you have remember. And afterwards, so this is uh, about what happened with Carthaginian wars I sort of mentioned. So when a, such a big war ends and then the victors actually managed to bring those people as or transport these uh, people as slaves back into Rome itself. So there was like a large number of slaves in Rome at this time period. Imagine what the ones who had money did. They would actually buy off these farms that the poor farm holders had and they, they would start cultivating them by using these slaves. So the slave market was high and it was cheaper for them to hire slaves rather than uh, free born citizens because they had to pay their daily wage. So in that sense, what happens, the poorer citizens became so poor and they started to rock into the, uh, to Rome itself. And uh, they, they, they were like mindlessly sort of going here and there without any job. And imagine when, when they were in these cities, all these festivals started happening and they just forget about what is going on inside their, I mean, in their family or in their life itself. They are drawn to this. And who would say no to a gladiator show? And then taxes started to rise up. They would impose several taxes on these people because why? The money in the treasury or the money of the state is used by these rulers to hold these games is one. And also to have big banquets. I mean, these banquets were massive and huge. So just to give an idea, like maybe some of you have seen uh, The Great Gatsby and actually Fitzgerald actually was influenced by one of the Roman uh, satire writers, uh, writer's work that is um, uh, uh, Petronius' uh, Satyricon. There you have like one person having this big massive uh, banquet to some of these people. That is how he was also inspired to actually write that story. So in one sense, you can see where these actually, where this money goes to. So like endless uh, use of uh, wealth that you have. And if we move back into the political arena, who is this? Who is this guy with this horse? Is Caligula, one of the emperors that we see during the first period of the empire. So here this horse is important. And when you see Caligula, he's mostly actually depicted with the horse. Because this horse is important, why? So he wanted to sort of uh, appoint this horse that he has. He is known as Incitatus, that is his name. I think it means swift, right? And he wanted to appoint his horse as a consul in the state itself. So like Suetonius and this historian also say, maybe they, he just mentioned about it, but not actually did it. But he wanted to actually get this random horse and say a point, okay, I'm going to appoint my horse as the consul. Without even getting the opinion of the other senators, he, would, he has the power to appoint whoever he wants to without uh, even getting the, uh, you know, um, acceptance from the others. And on the other hand, what we can understand from this is that this was actually arranged to insult or humiliate the senators saying that their work is so meaningless, even an animal could do it. See the, see what he says here. And there's this famous line, what he says, let them hate me so long as they fear me. So that is, that is, that's what he said. So in, in such a situations, people didn't uh, have the power to uh, do anything against him. But people actually can't live in this fear or just say yes to everything this mad emperor, I mean, that epithet is also there with him, mad emperor to rule forever. And later on, he was killed. Like I mentioned, many of these emperors were actually killed either by the Praetorian Guard. So the Praetorian Guard is the private army that an emperor would have. And, and uh, so either by the, the guards and maybe by the mob, the Roman people themselves, and uh, also their own family members. Imagine that's happening. So this whole idea of uh, Roman, uh, you know, uh, uh, empire, you can see the family feud. 
it's all about that it is the competition among the ruling elite so this is a famous uh, sculpture that we have of nero and agrippina his uh, mother uh, crowning him as the emperor so you can if you can remember he she actually wanted to make her son emperor by killing off his own husband who is then the emperor that is claudius so she actually married him i mean claudius is, i think agrippina is the third wife of uh, Agri uh, claudius and uh, agrippina wanted to have her own son uh, to become the ruler himself so you might wonder what how would they even an emperor becomes an emperor so this is the other problem that the romans faced they never actually created a very effective system to determine how to choose an emperor so that is also a problem so the main uh, rule that they had was uh, the emperor's private army that is the praetorian guard that i mentioned they are the ones who like gain the complete authority to choose an emperor i mean several things happened in one sense like at one time they actually sold it to the highest bidder that was a very hilarious thing and see the see the i mean the state of their time period itself and no wonder people would actually just enjoy the gladiator shows and then so in one sense you could see how this entire roman empire is almost like the roman emperors running their family business itself so if people rise or rose up to them they had to face uh, consequences like apart from like killing off their their ruler they had no other way to actually get rid of them but we have to remember that there were people a lot of people who stood up to these and managed to uh, overthrow these rulers i mean there were good emperors as well but i just wanted to focus on the corruption that was going on behind the roman gladiator shows so i will stop for with this and uh, hand over to amanthi to conduct the discussion itself so thank you so much for listening to this uh, speech and i would like to hear what you have to add to this uh, whole discussion thank you very much ma'am um so i think you took us from rome all the way to modern day and there was this light bulb moment you showed the memes at least for me <laughs> like, i wanted to bring in the memes because i know meme culture is so popular among everybody nowadays so then they can actually get that idea what i wanted to actually showcase here so it was very shocking to see that we actually laugh at these things and exactly. i think unconsciously we actually go through this way mm -hmm. once and it's not like maybe maybe consciously but we don't know but i think that is the tragedy in one sense that we have isn't it i don't know what the others think but um free to share your views or maybe about the share your views with regard to any any matter so uh, we can go to the discussion මුලදි කතා කරා වගේ මිසක් කච්චාව ඉංග්‍රීසි ඉංග්‍රීසි සහ සිංහල භාෂා දෙකෙන්ම කරන්න පුළුවන්. ඔබට තියෙන ප්‍රශ්න අදහස් ඒ වගේම මේක තව ඇඩ් කරන්න තියෙනවා නම් මම නෝට් කියන්නේ අලුත් දෙයක් එකතු කරන්න තියෙනවා නම් ඒකත් ගේන්න පුළුවන්. ප්ලේන් කියට අලුත් අයට දැනගන්න එක මම කියන්නම් ඔයගොල්ලගේ ප්‍රශ්න සහ අදහස් raise your hand option එක පාවිච්චි කරලා يعني කතා කරලා ंग please go ahead um till someone comes up with something uh, i have a small question hmm. uh, it's a more of observation um when you said lannister um uh -huh. the first thing that popped was the lannisters uh, yeah i was wondering whether there is any connection 
yeah i was also thinking about it but i couldn't actually look into it that much this is uh, yeah lannister you have a it ends with a and then uh, lannisters you have i think there could be a reference to that because i think um, the writer of uh, got like game of thrones is actually highly influenced by the classical world and uh, definitely there could be a reason behind that as well how it is actually connected with the lannisters themselves um, madam uh, while you were talking about it i actually went and checked uh, i didn't know i didn't know about the greek uh, so sorry the roman lannisters so uh, i when i heard the you know similarity i went and checked and i don't know the i couldn't read into the reason but it was apparently influenced by that exactly yeah. thank you rochana for looking into that yes definitely i think um, many tv series and these movies have been influenced by the roman world in one sense i think um, i'm i'm sure there are many people who are fans of um hunger games i think that is one such trilogy that we have uh, um is uh, connected there because i if 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 you have seen that there's this uh, in hunger games the st- i think the state itself is known as panim right as you can remember um i don't know who has seen that movie maybe there are people who have seen that movie if you can remember that starting from the beginning itself you have that connection made there was a conversation about hunger games in the post war series we have so maybe oh, there really yes um when they saw the post so there was a lot of uh, conversation about Um, politics also so mm-hmm. if they are they are in the today in today's audience maybe you can yeah that. maybe i think the weather is very very not favorable today i was also wondering whether there might be a connection is issue at one point but finally not hi amanti can you hear me hello okay yes i can hear you yes hi ma'am uh, hi that- Ah, <laughs> Sapni. Oh, Hi. Hello. After a long time. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. First of all, that was a good presentation, and I kind of observed two things. Mm-hmm. So, um, the first one is how violence has become naturalized, and how yes. it has become a source of entertainment, like you mm-hmm. pointed out, like the memes, and um, uh, and even um. the news right mm, and yes, how people yes. are like eagerly waiting for that like you know it's like a source of energy kind of you know something that some it has become something very light yes and yes. Uh, i think i don't know maybe maybe perhaps because it's a romanticization of violence through various forms of art i think that's mm. what it's yes, and also um i don't know i think it's also how people cope with it like mm. you know there is this very violent thing and you know unless you unless you make it funny they don't know how to i i don't know i'm just saying right mm. yes, uh, yes. Uh, i mean one, even if you, yeah. yes no no like since you are talking about like what is happening nowadays like even mm. with regard to what happens like with, with covid even like mm. look for the number of deaths mm. sense, yes. right but not maybe the ones who are cured in that mm. the top news that we should yeah. have but that's or the number of the people who have died would be the first thing that people would actually look into i i yeah. can't agree with what you're saying sophie yeah so it's i don't know i mean it's uh, i mean I, i don't know people are very <laughs> very uh, like you said looking forward to that you know mm-hmm. to see the number of deaths and you know all of that and um, the other observation that i may uh, mm-hmm. want to share is that um, i'm pretty sure i even though you didn't explicitly make connections to it it was for me it was like out there like uh, mm-hmm. implications to the current current um, political mm-hmm. situation in the country and yes. uh, and and mm-hmm. by current i don't mean like you know just this like right now right but yeah. throughout the years you can yes. see the, the gradual development and uh, i don't know when i when this will end but we can see connections and uh, i'm pretty sure the people can 
I, I'm not yes. going to like make the connections, but I yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yes, no need to yes because yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm so glad that you actually found that connection as well because that is very very important. And even the term like history repeats, sort of true in a way. Mm-hmm. So we need to actually. Uh, ban teaching, maybe get rid of history as a subject in our country, even that is also an issue because mm. we, we, we need to have these mm. uh, subjects because we need to learn from mm. the past. And the, the thing is, that even though history is taught like that, it's like uh, voluntary, like certain things are excluded, like right? you know, quote mm. unquote harmful things, saying that you know, that is not needed. Like, for mm. example, the JVP insurrections in Sri Lankan history, it's not focused on properly. Or even if you're teaching, you know, you're just lightly treading on it instead of going deep into it. So uh, I think even the way of teaching history is, mm. uh, is also important. Yeah, censoring Rather, has become, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, censoring, true. yes. Mm-mm-mm. Sugar coating it, glossing over it, you know. Yes, yes. of course. Uh, I think that is... That is the tragedy that we are facing, how we we are made not to talk about certain things and to talk about certain things. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Swapni, Aki, for that, and thank you. Um, thank you so much, Swapni, for your comments and this observation. Uh, I'm so glad to hear uh, them from you. Okay, no worries. <laughs> no, we have a uh, Aishi, yeah. I think. Is Aishi? Yeah, uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, Madam uh, Godak on the uh, 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 interesting presentation, Nika. Uh, as having a hagani hitia. Um, I'm what am I Oh, I hear you. Uh, Madam, Mata uh, Godak, uh, eka point ka gana, uh, Godak, uh, ahan noni kela hituna, Madam King. Mm-hmm. Uh, gladiator shows yaddi, uh, dramas tibunani, mm-hmm. not that oh. they were extinct. So, yes. uh, uh, but the focus was, um, on, the on gladiator. gladiator shows. Eka mm-hmm. to Madam, government king, mm-hmm. uh, Gladiator shows encourage karanda dramas mm. discourage kar kiri ma kuth vende ati kela hitena matra me mukade drama sage kine critically hitan da mini sumna polamba vanne. No. Taka te gladiator show ek kahem me na ne what you see is uh, what you get. The reality. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, ita ko te uh, mini hitela. Um, mm. Uh, Tiran again, Makwat, uh, government take a vivation, a kiri Makwat when Natinisa, Godakala dramas discourage when that in aid. Animarma. One of my stuti, I issue a penapu, uh, uh, Avasta, some bande, some bande, then we are Vedaka Karnakta, my metana, itripatri, mate, etra, evelave, evele, dramas, and Hataka and Velava Tiburin Atinisa, Tama eka mama. Duck uh, mentioned currently to name. Then Nati got to the Hema, Rome, Tibunu Natia, then Samara Metanina Hadar Latina Pulum, then Bohomia got to the Api Greasy Tibunu Natia, take a got to Mehigale, Rome Tibunu Eva take Harima Venus, a Sorupia to my gun, then Bohomia Nati, the Api got to him a Godaka be duck in eleven comedies. A Peterans got to plotters got to the Hema, Eva Yalagi Nati of Kuma. Greek Anuartanas or Parivartana. Mealagin Leonu, Mealagin with the American original place up at a duck in the Habene. If a color to reckon then tragedies got to tapita Hamavene Senecagi. Tragedies Evat, Greek Mitya, Strength of my Levila Tin, uh, to put a tragedies than a Katakrotema, Evayat, Apigrisi, no decoco at the duck in Habena, Mukud then. The Apigato Tema Senecage, uh, Thaistis Gato Tema. A hidi appear duck in the habinet are a marana, your samban, then Keneco marana, the patkarana, moment a gunat. Am I dramatized curl a pin under meala belly? 
विवेचनेटस्टरा रोम प्रहसन नाट्यवादांग मिनिमुखदेटल विनोद सैल जीवाण मुखदेमेंगे मुखदे अद्हास दुर्ना संबंधी 
ඔව් මැඩම් ගොඩක් ස්තුතියි මේ ඇත්තට මැඩම් මේ වගේ අවස්ථාවක් මේ මේ වගේ දෙයක් අරේන්ජ් කරපු ආ මං ටිටත් අනිත් මොඩරේටර්ස් ලටත් ඇයි විෂ් දෙම් ගුඩ් ලක් මැඩම් ටත් තැන්ක් යු ෆෝ ද ඉන්ටරස්ටින් ටොක් තැන්ක් යු සෝ මච් අයෂි ෆෝ යෝ ඉන්පුට් දැට්ස් වෙරි වෙරි ඔකේ 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 We also have Bhat here. Is this it, I think? Bhat Hi, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Hi, Bhat here. Hi. Yes, Mr. Uh, Bhat, ma'am. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. It just took me back to my grander graduate days. Like, oh, <laughs> that's the, great. Yes. <laughs> discussions we had in the classroom about all these things and the fights, obviously. Like, yes. Ideas. yes. Definitely, <laughs> I miss those fights. I don't know whether that's <laughs> very... <laughs> um yeah so that and was entertaining for me in one sense exactly so that's that's kind of entertainment for us in that sense <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. and thank you amanthi and rochana for organizing all these things and all the activity in the bnd uh, this uh, society and uh, i would like to say this ma'am like uh, mm. what is the, the topic circus mm. and bread mm. bread and circus pansa circus and yes. like i would uh, like to highlight on the fact that like how these were used to make people forget about the real issues the pending mm-hmm. issues in the, the government or the, the society mm-hmm. basically and yes. uh, like you mentioned about this 100 days of holidays and yeah people were giving an intense supply of supply of bread and entertainment and mm-hmm. how they like uh, forgot everything else the pen that the, the tending matters in the society and all the things but they just mm-hmm. flock together for this entertainment and like to to quench their hunger and there's that yes. and uh, yes. like and obviously where sobni mentioned how this this society mirrors the modern sri lankan society that is one of the thing right mm-hmm. is talking mm-hmm. about it and yes how the spectacle and the money and the power and all those things and i especially like the court uh, to mention them like let them hate me as long as they fear me i mean come exactly. on that's, that, mm-hmm. that's something mm-hmm. that we can like apply to this day as well and we can see how this thing through history we can get a reading how this uh, the modern society would where this modern society would society would lead man don't you think so like it mirrors it and we know what happened how it happened and history tells us that's the lesson and we can actually learn and get a brief idea what would happen and uh, i guess that's something we should make people aware of and make people sh- like uh, that some more what people should see especially mm. uh, i don't know like that's what i felt i mean like it's very like uh, like uh, like should be related to the time uh, that we are living in and all the things not just sri lanka but like uh, in consider the whole this situation in the world mm. Mm. yes thank you very much for all these things and it was very insightful and yes i hope we could like have a really good discussion about it like mm. uh, like yeah thank you very much Thank you so much Bhatia for your comments and your insights into the presentation and I'm glad that you I mean at least some people maybe the people who actually really look into the situation and then understand what is going on like without just saying yes to everything like a mindless uh, spectator so that is not something that we have to do so I think um, so we need to um I mean even in the past we remember Spartacus but not the one who put an end to the revolt itself. Yeah. Thank you so much again Bhatia. Thank you Bhatia. And uh, I, I I was thinking of the same thing ma'am. Um hmm. at a cyclic gatiya batike api the ilanga predict karanna puluwan kiyala something that I was talking with a friend also the other day. Mhm. Have a realization me kiyawa tiyena me cyclic gatiya e kiyanne අපි කීපයක් දැක්කම අපිට ඊළඟ එක නිකන් you can almost predict what's going to happen next mm. i think you um scary in a way right <laughs> that's scary in a way right yes. uh when you're talking also there were some aspects i don't like to name like current politicians into it yeah yeah okay. no need yes yes anyways yeah. we don't know yeah, yeah. but there were some aspects in your uh, discussion ma'am uh, mm. it was almost like a like a premonition as sort of a prediction <laughs> 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 um 
Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Amanti, for pointing those, uh, I mean, points as well. That's that's really good. Uh, yeah, Can I have any other comment? Ah, uh, yeah, Sophni. I think uh, this relates to what both Bhati and Amanti said. Um, mm. The thing is, we notice these things. This, as Amanti pointed out, the cyclical nature. We notice, we we see this mirroring. But um, I don't know. Either people don't do anything about it, or they don't know what to do. There, there is some like the reaction to it, right? So mm. even us, like, so we know what's going to happen next. But we are, I don't know. Perhaps what we are doing is not enough, or maybe I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how to put into words the fact yes. that. Um, you know, like nothing is happening from our part as citizens, as as commoners in the country. Uh, exactly. Maybe that's how even the Romans felt in those. Mm, mm. Exactly. And uh, I mean, even nowadays, there are several ways that we, we are maybe in a way silenced. Like, for instance, we don't have our universities open. So mm. if we're open... Um, mm we can see some input from the students bodies mm. themselves. So that is like one start and that would be one reason why they are close. The current situation is kind of the, the pandemic. I mean, it's kind yes. of facilitating this. Exactly. That, yeah. That's true. That's true. Thank you, Sampu, for the input. Then we have some yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, so Asunta says the connection with Hunger Games is so cool. I didn't see that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then Anne Sidwa says the slide on memes made me realize how much we are entertained by cruelty and we don't realize it. Um, I think Rosina, you wanted to add something to it? Yeah, uh, no, human behavior itself literally never changes, right? Yes, yes, all. exactly. <laughs> but if at all, I mean, all this violence and br brutality, if at all, they have just become more sophisticated in a way because mm. I mean, they are just being filmed right now. And uh, I I was actually, uh, now uh, I was telling Amante that I was Game of Thrones and I was telling you about the episode of Game of I'm not, a, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a visually amazing person. So I was kind mm -hmm. of telling okay. Amante I'm, I'm probably not a violent person. But then mm -hmm. I just remembered. So I, I read all the five books. And oh, the, really? Yeah, I read the books, but I couldn't watch it. And in the books, I was actually waiting for the next death to happen. I really enjoyed the way uh, blood was written about, you know, and mm -hmm. now to think about it, you know, the fact that I, I was actually waiting for the next death scene just to read about how graphic it was. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of normal. 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 I think normalize kind of normal. I think that's kind of normal. Then Rochana is a Kalin Katawa. Then Waku Eka, Hari Lassana Katawa, Ayeshi Kiva Dawasa. I think that's kind of normal. I think that's kind of normal. I think that's kind of normal. I think that's Roman Vasio, uh, then Gladiator shows Balua, Ayala, Samara, Kita, Hari Mabari, Kami Alakoma, they can balance. In an apicoma de alagi, Minas winne, Minas the Mata, him of the Kienica. Then may so called idea of like civilized people. E ekuma I up a civilized karanema, apivek, him a tame karanama tanatama in the Kienica Kitan, look at the api minisua shin. Samara quit a vendapul wang, may killing Natta may marana, some banding, unat, a pita a a. एक वेनास करण्ड तापियो सिविलाइज्ड करवण्ड है दुआ किये ने कत कियाने प्रमाइतन आये ऐसी मित्रने इन्ना ना वाटे कथा पढ़ा कोणं एलेब्रेट करण्ड तक पुलवां वाय दा मंगिताने ओ मंगिताने मैडम अपि सोबहावेन में वायलेंट मुकदेविया 
uh, like we are animals actually though we are civilized mm. uh, so we have that violence in us api civilized wenawa kiyanne man natural deyak what what ape tiyena violence walta kamatta tama ape natural dey kiyala mama hitanne ehemat hitanna puluwan kenekta kiyala oh ekka ekka athakin oh man hitanne e pattat apita ganda puluwan kiyana eka me ganda puluwan thank you ayeshi ekata bau karata thank you and uh, thank you rosen and and uh, for yes. this uh thawa tha ek comment ekak thena mai ekak kiyala asuntha ka chance ekak denna asuntha katha karanna one uh uh thawa ek comment ekak denna thena the character pluta kevens me in mocking jay quotes panem in sequences to catnips and tells her that this is exactly what the capital does to the districts with hunger games you see i think maybe is she quoting from uh, from the books uh, i'm not sure uh... could be right no that is very very now see even in that movie or maybe the books you have all these characters like like even Pl- plutarch and you have seneca like i was talking about seneca earlier what happens to seneca even in that uh, even in the movie that he is the one who actually organizes these games uh, and he is like the controller uh, the one who is in, in control and the games go not according to the one who like i think general snow maybe and uh, and then at the end of the film it may i mean he is made to commit suicide so that is also another connection that we can make with uh, hunger games and uh, what what yes and thank you Uh, for saying that yes it is from the third book itself yeah I, i i haven't actually read the books so thank you very much for pointing this out i really need to i will definitely check on this thank you so much thank you and and asunta yes thank you uh, first of all um uh, this ma'am that was a awesome uh, this uh, presentation and the discussion as well uh and also thank you plenty for organizing this avanti and rochana uh i wanted to add something to what uh, rochana said about mm-hmm. how we don't realize how much we are entertained by violence and uh, i'm not sure how related this is but last night i was watching a video about justice and um, in that video they had drawn a parallel to um, there's this vigilante character in i think marvel or dc comics called the punisher and mm-hmm. how he originally was a bad guy but he turns uh, uh, he gets revenge on his uh, enemy and then after that he has this thirst for blood and then he continues to murder other bad guys so he sort of becomes a good guy but what the uh, comics actually try to portray is how this violence never ends and uh, in this video on justice that i saw there uh, there was a parallel drawn to how blood feuds happen and how even in the odyssey how mm. um odysseus comes back and he kills everybody uh, all the suitors and uh, basically how their families were going to kill him back as revenge but it only stops because of uh, because athena comes and mm. there's a due sex machine so yes. uh, anyway wait i'm going off topic anyway there was another parallel drawn to the police brutality which is also kind of a current situation and yes. more than the police brutality it was about how the people reacted towards it and there were so many people who actually uh, wanted to see it there there was the like there's the uh, right and left or something like that and 
people who wanted to see the brutality and then there are people who think ah oh, no we are not like that but then mm -hmm. uh, this video goes on to say that how uh, even the people who think, ah, no, we don't like to see all these uh, extreme measures like burning people and kicking them to death and that kind of thing. Um, even these people who say they are not violent, they kind of uh, like a small, a smaller version, but of that kind of violence the videos compiled on YouTube called instant karma and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this feeling, uh, uh, this video is by ContraPoints. And ContraPoints says that this feeling is Schroden fight, Schroden Schreider, or some, I, I don't know how to pronounce it properly. It's a mm -hmm. German word which means uh, gaining happiness from the pain of others. So nice. that's like the dark desire that makes us enjoy the pain of others and like violence so much i think i don't know yeah so yeah. yes thank you yeah. thank you so much asunta for bringing that point i know you watch a lot of uh, videos in the net and then follow them and uh, with uh, with regard to that point that you mentioned how people gain happiness from others uh, pain so if if uh, if I add to what you were saying, um, maybe if if I, if I will try to get an example from Roman history itself, one uh, I think it was uh, Caligula. Yeah, it should be Caligula. Yeah, I think he he is. I mean, sometimes they make him. I mean, he is sort of a sadist in one sense. Why I would say this because these historians mention how he actually brought to his palace and gave like a big banquet to the parents of the ones that are going to die next day in the gladiatorial shows. So in that way, we can see how we enjoyed and sort of tortured and humiliated these people just to gain some happiness in one sense. So this is also done by these uh, um, emperors. So I'm just going back to Rome itself, but you were talking about uh, the police brutality and all of that, that is sort of kind of escalating. So that is the horrible nature, I mean, the horrible situation that we are facing, I mean, which, which should have been a safe place, but it's not so. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Asunta, for that input. And uh, if anybody wants to bring in anything, please do. Thank you, Asunta. Um, I think we have a couple of more comments, ma'am. I'll read them. There's a question also. Okay. Um, Dilmi says, thank you so much for the insightful and interesting presentation, ma'am. It took me back to my undergraduate days. Thank you so much for your comments, Dilmi. Thank you, Dilmi. And uh, Durani has a question also. Ah, yes. uh, hi, ma'am. So to go back to something you mentioned, you talked about Aristophanes and Terence and the thematic differences. So this is mainly because they belong to, to two different genres as in old and new comedy. Isn't that so? Yeah, that is, uh, that is exactly true. Because uh, Aristophanes did work with old comedy and that is why it was sort of different. And then one can ask the question, why didn't the Romans actually translate or made any copies or, or maybe made, uh, what do you call, yeah, or in, I mean, use those scripts of Aristophanes themselves right, while they were taken from Menander's place. So are they playing it safe in one sense? That would be another question that we can ask. And I totally agree. Terence, Plotus, they all belong to new comedy uh, because of the, I mean, because of the, the things, I mean, the, the, the dramas that they wrote. And Aristophanes belongs to old comedy and the entire genre is different. But um, why didn't the Romans, they actually always copied from the Greeks, but why did they leave Aristophanes? Because as I, I'm sure, Dulani, you might agree with me how even Aristophanes, when he wrote those plays, because he actually 
he without uh, i mean being scared of the state or the rulers uh, he would actually criticize them in the place themselves like cleon and even socrates all of them and there was one instance where he was actually uh, exiled from athens itself and he he had to endure that and then afterwards he was taken back to athens itself so he actually went through that issue as well but the roman writers did not want to go to that level and uh, yes i think that is that but definitely they belong i mean their genres are different true thank uh, you so much for bringing uh, that one. thank you ma'am for your reply ah um, yes you are here Uh, yes and i think we need more place place like um uh, wasps because like it openly criticizes the the society and the the things that we need to uh, pay more attention so mm. i think even in the present society if we have more place like that mm. uh, yeah it would be like um uh, it would help us to understand the real situation of the society isn't that so ma'am yes exactly it may be an eye opener because that is the boss that you are talking about is quite relevant to what we are dealing with the society how they are like criticizing the government and yes, also the judicial system there's no law in one sense what how, what are the citizens going to do they would just go to get the payment that they are given and they are corrupt the corruption everything is actually portrayed by aristophanes himself yes true yes thank you ma'am yeah thank you so much dulani for participating in the discussion uh, thank you dulani um thank you amanti tham ab asunta yeah i just wanted to add to that uh, the thing about uh, the old comedy and new comedy mm-hmm. could you even go so far as to say that new comedy arose because the romans didn't want to stay in the political field and they wanted to just do like uh, things that were not related to uh, the political drama and more domestic and that kind of thing could you say that yes in in one sense uh, we could because this is like new comedy sort of arise after the uh the 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 rise of like the end of alexander great and all the imports and all these things started to come into rome and all of that and with this scenario things are changing and all these things new things are happening and one thing that uh, like um, scholars mention about this factor is that now the people wanted they didn't want to focus on like all the big issues that are happening they just wanted to go to the theater and then watch a play and then have some fun and then come back home that that point is also given by some of these uh, scholars that we have uh, with regard to this shift of uh, from new comedy uh, i mean from all comedy new comedy what we see in the roman world itself because what is going on is enough for them so they needed an output where they can actually enjoy something a small uh maybe a small drama or something like that because you had apart from these new comedies they are were like uh, small skits you would say like pantomimes or even mimes like quite but they they also talked about maybe mythological aspects and also about daily activities that were going on so in that sense yes i would sort of agree what you are what you were saying and also that other side where they wanted and sort of like an escape escapism in one sense it's also there with new comedy can you now now example i will give you like from the present world now how many of you watch like even like friends like that is a tv show that anybody would watch like maybe several times now if you are if you like imagine after a hard day's work you come back home and you will watch that now if you are supposed to watch like a movie i mean a tv series like uh, like chernobyl maybe for that you would have to have like an open i mean a time where you need to 
like a free time and open your mind and then sit and watch. But friends, you can watch anytime. So it has that similar aspect with regard to the new comedies that the Romans watched. I hope that was a bit clear. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Asunta. Uh, Madam, uh, this is a question uh, directly about uh, gladiators. Uh, mm. You had uh, mentioned the types of gladiators. And uh, uh, yes. I was just wondering, uh, I can't remember Gladiator the movie much. I watched it a long time ago. Uh, but uh, uh, what type of gladiator was um, was was the main gladiator? I can't remember his name. Was Maximus. Yeah, Maximus. I think Maximus, he sort of changed his, I mean... Uh, um, now, can you remember, like, even with regard to the helmet that he used, he doesn't even use it for a while. I mean, yeah, it just yeah. out. And, uh, yeah, that's a good point. I need to get back to it and see. And uh, I can't remember that, I mean, whether he had a type or not. Because he seems to be like a very unruly sort of gladiator in the arena. And uh, he's not even listening to what is happening or to the audience itself also. Um, I don't know, does anybody remember the, um, that's a very good question you asked. Because like time to time with regard to the matches that he goes to, not matches, like the games that he goes to, it changes his, I mean, his appearance, ne? the yeah. art and all of that. Um, if anybody can remember that. You also can't. Uh, maybe we can dis take the discussion to the set on that. Maybe? Yeah, definitely. Why don't I come back with that answer, Rochana? Because I, when yeah, I watched it a long time ago, but that is not uh, a safe answer. But I will definitely, I don't want to give a wrong answer here, but I will go back and check and uh, let you know. Definitely. Okay, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Rochana. Um, have a time limit for this? Uh, we usually go till about 10 minutes. I see. Um, till someone comes up with a question, I have a small uh, question with regard to the other uh, or a life and death. Uh, in the gladiator the arena uh -huh. I have seen in movies how mm -hmm. uh, people give the thumbs up or thumbs down and this gladiator gets killed yes. or, or really. uh, was it actually the case or is it like a later movie? Uh, uh, that is uh, the discussion that many people ask uh, I mean have right and uh, so like with, with certain cases you have um like pointing down would be the idea given that you need to get rid of the, the gladiator. But when you point it up, yes, definitely, you need to free him. But I'm not exactly sure of the, the gesture that they made. Uh, <laughs> but definitely, uh, the crowds, I mean, with regard to what they want to do with the gladiator, the fallen gladiator, was taken into consideration. But um, yeah, definitely because the, the the emperor and the rulers they need to listen to the audience themselves as well. Right. Thank you. Uh, and another thing, uh, with everybody's comments I realized, Api then you know what I'm talking about. Madhi Sandarshan akela, akela devanvita. I felt like that was the modern equivalent of a gladiator show. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You mean a stage thing then? Uh, yeah, some event is staged so they will forget the more other important events. Of course, yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, 
because even here you can see like even with the gladiator shows the the rulers themselves did have the mm. have the ways to control what they are showing and uh, that is also there because they are the ones who are staging the whole thing and um, yeah uh, ma'am ah oh, yes aishi uh i have something to add here um, uh, ah. so apu kiwa uh, isella uh, uh, mehema uh, uh, government ekki me vidihata karaddi ai api citizens la vidihata nishabda inna avastha tiyenawa ne sometimes i feel that uh, all um, um, uh, what all people like uh, want is um, bread and circuses they are <laughs> fine as far as they get bread and circuses exactly yes, that is true um actually there was this um, there's this quotation by one of the writers where they where he says like about the present culture even the past like we have gone into the length that the mob doesn't even demand bread and circuses අපි ඒ තත්ත්වෙටම දැන් ඇත්තටම එක වෙලාවට වැටිලා තියෙනවා කියන එක දකින්න පුළුවන්. මම හිතන්නේ ආයෙෂේ කියන එකත් එක්කම සම්පූර්ණ මෙන්ම එකඟ වෙනවා. මම හිතන්නේ yeah that is the tragedy itself in one sense. But I think it is so refreshing I think Rochana and Amanti thank you for like even organizing this because I mean we all, like i mean we are not even meeting in the university and not even having physical classes and then it's so hard to even manage a discussion online in online classes that is very frustrating but with hearing all of you and all your ideas sort of uh brings back that energy again i think we need more discussions like this that is my idea and uh, i'm so glad that we had this sort of uh, discussion with all of you and it's so great to hear all your views about it because it shows that we are not alone i think that is also very important for us to realize and thank you uh, for uh, really the discussion that is stayed i mean rooted in the ancient times but is still very applicable um, yeah you're welcome amanti so um if we So uh, we have few couple of minutes. If there is anything that anybody would like to add as a last question or a comment, we give like ten seconds. <laughs> okay, looks like. Um, yeah, maybe they already asked and <laughs> what they thought about everything. Yes, and we are also coming to our um, time limit. So then, uh, let's wrap up for today. So um, finally, again, I want to thank Miss Vidita for accepting the invitation and for taking the time. I know you put a lot of effort into it. <laughs> Um, um yeah yes thank you you're welcome and thank you for both rochana and amanti for inviting me for this session and also for the participation participants for engaging with an interesting very uh, insightful discussion yes definitely yeah, thank you for everyone for questions comments and being there till the end so uh, then i think we can wrap up for today uh, we will join with a new topic next week and uh, a new guest lecture in about 3 months time so till then i um, hope you stay safe good night thank you everyone